Hello, everyone. We're here with Nate Prouty, uh, who's going to talk to us about his work in the EOU Art Faculty Exhibition. So, Nate, um, looking through your work here, I see there's like this dichotomy that goes on for me with it. There's this, um, it's very playful and fun, mm -hmm. um, but there's also this kind of finicky aspect to it, too, that's almost obsessive, compulsive, and full of anxiety as mm -hmm. well. Could yeah. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, you know, I think this has been a really interesting time to be making work. Uh, you know, I think anxiety levels are high. My anxiety levels are certainly high. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think normally I, um, I'm not interested in making work that has that kind of level or tone of anxiety to it. Um, but I've kind of given myself permission in the last year to kind of just dive right into that side of the work a little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, you know, I think I'm, I'm feeling really anxious. We're all feeling really anxious, and right. it doesn't really make sense to me to kind of hide that under a bushel <laughs> right now. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a freneticness and kind of a pent upness in in this recent body of work uh, that I think is definitely a, a thread. Yeah. Do you? Can you talk about that maybe in relation to this work that we're standing sure. here? Yeah, yeah. Or, um, or whatever you want to talk to yeah, about this, yeah, this work. Is, it doesn't necessarily. This is probably my newest piece. Um, and I'm to be honest, I'm still figuring out what these are. Um, I, I don't yet know if these are self-portraits or if they're landscapes or if they're, you know, uh, documentation in a ph photography sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking a lot about uh, this quote I read uh, back in grad school about the philosopher Heidegger. And Heidegger talks about uh, angst. And I think a lot of us understand angst as you know, feeling kind of mopey or feeling kind of down or feeling kind of sad. Um, but Heidegger talks about true angst actually being this moment. And he likens it to you step off a curb in the middle of a snowstorm when there's so much snow that you lose focus. And that moment of stepping off the curb combined with the environment of just overwhelming visuals um, detaches your brain from your body a little bit. And mm -hmm. in that kind of detachment, this, this momentary kind of psychological blip, um, that's kind of what true angst is, this kind of ego loss for just a moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking of these kind of like that snowstorm, kind of like that effect that you get when you look at a chain link fence, when your eyes go cross-eyed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also thinking about kind of the materials, right? Like glitter is not ever something you see in a morose or negative connotation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to talk about in my artist lecture, uh, I show a big screen capture of uh, the Google thing I did when I Google sad glitter, mm -hmm. and it comes up with all these really great images that are just <laughs> very strange because those are not two things that go together. Um, so this isn't necessarily a portrait of sadness or of even of angst itself, but it's, it's kind of a, a mishmash of just the last year in my brain, yeah. Okay. Do you want to talk about any of the other pieces in the show? Uh, sure, yeah, let's Walker? talk about this guy. I've got these two right here. Um, I recently, uh, last summer, or actually the summer before last, right before the pandemic, I was lucky enough to uh, have EOU sponsor me to go to uh, Iceland for an artist residency. Mm -hmm. um, and I had been really interested in going to Iceland, um, partially because of the tradition of stonework that I had seen in photographs. Um, I grew up in New England outside of Boston and we have this beautiful landscape all around the old parts of colonial Boston uh, that have stone walls everywhere. Um, and they're protected monuments, you're not allowed to touch them, but you'll have an old you know, 200, 300 year stone wall running through your backyard. Um, and I found that the, the kind of parallels to my old New England visuals in the landscape there and the parallels to kind of some of the, uh, the Icelandic landscape and some of the man-made stonework that was there was really interesting. Um, so I've been kind of on a stone kick. I'm making these miniature walls, miniature wells. Um, I'm also thinking back a lot to uh, trips I took to Europe. I'm still digesting travels that I had 10, 15 years ago and the visuals I saw there. Um, I'm thinking a lot about reliquaries also. So uh, these kind of insanely festooned what I'm thinking as kind of hammered copper, hammered gold, really precious metal ribbons um, that are in this Baroque abundance uh, to the point where they're uh, about to just fall apart. Um, abundance is something I think about a lot of in my work as well. Um, I think that's taken on new meaning maybe in the last four or five years. 
Um, but yeah, the, my work is kind of at this middle point where some of the symbolism and meaning that used to have direct ties to certain things in my work and in my concepts have changed very drastically just because of the political and social landscape. Um, so I'm kind of I'm making maybe not new work in terms of the materials, but a lot of the ideas are very, very new uh, to the point where I'm still figuring them out. Could you talk about that idea of abundance a little bit more? Yeah. Um, well, I can talk about it to a certain extent in the way that I used to talk about it. I'm still not quite sure how to talk about it now. Um, in, in undergrad, I became really interested in this idea of kind of American supremacy and the myth we tell ourselves in this country, uh, largely fueled by kind of the visuals of Disney um, and, and just various other kind of myth-making uh, entities we have in this country. Um, and mo moving out west particularly was really interesting, seeing kind of the reality of the west versus this kind of mythical uh, cartoon that I had in my head of it back east. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking a lot about kind of the post-World War II abundance that we were afforded as a culture in this country in particular. Um, I think of the word American juggernaut a lot. I, mm. I, I happened to mention that in an artist lecture and a student raised their hand and wanted to t me to talk more about that. And mm. I just threw it out of my mouth. Um, mm. But since kind of realizing that that's an interesting word from other people, I think about that word a lot. Um, so I think a lot of this work, a lot of my previous work was about the American juggernaut and the abundance um, and the expectation that my generation would have more abundance than the last generation. And they had more abundance than the last generation, right? Mm -hmm. And there's this expectation and this birthright um, that mm -hmm. we as Americans are expected to have. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was on the way out <laughs> for a while, and I think it's definitely on its way out now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so my work, like I said earlier, that the political aspects of my work have shifted kind of under my feet a little bit. Um, and yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what abundance means anymore uh, over the last five, 10 years. You know, it's, it's certainly not uh, you know, a, necessarily a steady job for life, <laughs> mm -hmm. like we were told it would be. Um, so yeah, I'm still figuring out what that word means. It's kind of got a new definition for me now. For me, when you say that, it's interesting. It, it, it sort of relates to what I asked you earlier about the kind of obsessiveness of it, the, mm -hmm. the abundance. They, they seem related to me. Do you see yeah. a relationship between those? I do, yeah. Um, and that's actually becoming more of a link. I think that was a subconscious link or a subconscious thing I was doing. Um, in the past and now it's becoming more of a like oh no you're literally making an abundance of, like right like that is an abundance of mm -hmm. ribbons that is right. an abundance of sparkle right um, and so yeah I think in some ways this new work is I'm putting my money where my mouth is a little bit more um, in terms of using strategies of abundance in the studio to talk about concepts of abundance outside of the studio um, I'm kind of a I'm, I'm a little, I'm a high strung person, you know, mm -hmm. so I think um, there's something about the labor of sitting there and, you know, gluing gems onto a board or, you know, folding ribbons out of paper for five hours mm -hmm. um, that kind of, yeah, it, it sinks into my OCD, um, but it also sinks into my kind of sense of meditation and zoning out, right? Like, and, and for me, that is maybe also a moment uh of instigation of angst, like I was talking about a minute ago, right? Where it's this, you're so in the zone in your studio, repeating emotion over and over and over again, that you just kind of, you zone out. Um, and, and that moment, whether it's angst or whether it's being in the zone, I think those are two, I don't know if those are opposites of the same thing or if those are the same thing, but I'm, I'm interested in, in that quite a bit in my studio, yeah. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to say to kind of sum up about the work in this show or? Uh, no, other than... Um, or where you're going with your work, maybe? Yeah, so uh, one thing I would say, you know, to the students out there <laughs> that are watching this, um, you know, be, be honest about when you're not sure what the work is, right? Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm confident in this work. I think this is interesting work. I'm still not sure what it is, really, right? And I, we just, you heard me talk about that uncertainty mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, I'm getting more comfortable as I get older and more experienced in the studio, putting work out there into the world that is not 100% uh, 
conceptually tied together or uh, packaged nicely, mm -hmm. right? So I, I find often that the work in my mind has to go out into the world and develop and simmer a little bit outside of my studio while I can digest it. And it's usually when it comes back to me or I, you know, I see it in an exhibition or I start to have a conversation about it, but that's when certain things really start to link up. Um, I used to be very self-conscious about that. And now that I've kind of given myself permission to be less self-conscious about that, I think my work has gotten better and I'm, I'm a happier artist, certainly. Great. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, I appreciate thanks, it. Good luck.